Everywhere I go, people normally ask me, when you say hustle like an immigrant, and I am not an immigrant, how can I get that? How do I relate to that? And I've had that so many times. And um, I decided that, OK, I need to give people a better understanding first. What is the thief is behind hustle like an immigrant is? Hustle like an immigrant have absolutely nothing to do, your, do with your nationality. He have nothing to do with your uh, citizen status. He has nothing to do with your gender, race, ethnicity, sex, or whatsoever. Hustle like an immigrant is a mindset. And hence we forgot, we were told that America has been built by immigrants. And one way or the other, we all came here at some point. So meaning, no matter what you are or what background you represent, if you're in this country, you have that hustle like an immigrant mentality somewhere in you. It may be a long, long time ago, but we're going to unearth it today. And we we're going to get to the cross of the matter. The reason why immigrants are usually more successful anywhere they go, and these are facts, these are statistics out there, you can look it up yourself. Immigrants are three times more likely to become successful compared to natives anywhere you go. This is not about America, this is globally. You can move from Nebraska right now to California, and your level of uh, go-getter attitude is automatically skyrocketing and different from natives in California. And that's the thesis behind it, and now we were going to go through it. And um, like I said earlier, hustle like an immigrant is a mindset. You can learn it, and you can teach it. It can be taught. I break down the hustle like an immigrant into, three, uh, into five different steps. One is about what's your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? Two is your goal. Do you have a goal that is being foiled by your why? Three, do you have the discipline to see through to your goals? Four, perseverance. Hardship is going to come. Obstacles are going to come your way. Can you get through those? And five, I call it the blank check. Are you a risk taker? Are you willing at any given point to sacrifice who you are for what you could ultimately become? The reason why I said hustle like an immigrant is a mindset, I will kind of walk you through. Let's look at the globe globally first, worldwide. When you talk about the smartest nation in the world, who can give me any guess? What country do you think is the smartest country in the world? Denmark. Denmark. India. India. China. China. Now let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the fact. It's Japan. Japan is the smartest nation in the world. I'm trying to walk you through something. We will get there. What is the most educated country in the world? Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Any other suggestions? Germany. Germany? Okay, let's look at the numbers. Israel. But the funny thing is, I haven't had America yet. Matter of fact, America is not even top three when you talk about these countries. The richest nation in the world. Abu Dhabi, okay. Abu Dhabi, the Emirates, good, close, but not quite. The richest nation in the world is Qatar. I know, suckers, when I was leaving, I was like, whoa, I would never guess, right? The largest nation in the world, landscape-wise, Russia. And the last one, the largest population, China. None of these countries has America in it. Matter of fact, America is not even top three in any of these categories. Now, what's the greatest nation in the world? United States of America. America don't care how big you are. America don't care about how educated you are. America don't care about how many people live in your country. As long as we are concerned, <laughs> we rule the world.
with an attitude. It's a mindset. And that's the challenge I want us to get from here today. And this mindset is not only unique to America. America got this from somewhere. And I will show you where America got this attitude from. Where the founding fathers of this country got this attitude from. This attitude of we don't care who you are. We think we're better than everybody, no matter how smart you are. No matter how much money you have in your pocket. No matter how big your military is. We still feel like our Navy SEAL is better than your 100 million members that you are. We can send eight people to take out anybody in this world because we are that confident on our men and women who serve us. It's a mindset. Let's look at the jungle. What is the fastest animal in the jungle? The cheetah. There you go. The smartest animal in the jungle. This one kind of was, was a sucker for me. An elephant, OK? I thought it was going to be like a snake, a rabbit, one of those sneaky animals. No, it's not. This one was surprising for me. It's the chimpanzee. The biggest animal in the jungle. Elephant, yep. The heaviest animal in the jungle. Not quite, close, not quite. Nope. Is the hippo. And the, the tallest animal in the jungle, this one is a pretty easy one, a giraffe. Now, what's the king of the jungle? The lion. The giraffe may be the tallest in the jungle. The elephant may be the biggest. The hippo may be the heaviest. The chimpanzee may be the smartest. The cheetah may be the fastest. As far as the lion is concerned, they are all breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> the lion don't care how big you are, how fast you can run. The lion will have you for dinner. That is the mindset. That is the attitude, and that's what we're going to unlock today. It starts with your mindset. Other people may be smarter than you. Other people may have more money into their bank accounts if you're running a company, the big corporation may be way bigger than your company. And when you come when you're an athlete, all the athletes may be faster and more agile than you are. But what's your heart? Do they have the same heart that you do? When it comes down to it, are you going to quit? Or are they going to drag your body out of it? This is the mindset. You do not let other people intimidate you with their knowledge. You don't let other people intimidate you with their money. You don't let other people intimidate you with their gender or whatsoever advantage they think they may have over you. Because once you have the mindset that you are capable and you are willing and nothing is going to stop you, you already give yourself a winning chance. In Africa, every morning, the antelope wakes up. It just wakes up running, took off, running for its life. In Africa also, every morning, the lion wakes up, just wakes up running, running to get survival for himself and his family. In Africa, every morning, whosoever has the desire to survive that day, win the race. If the antelope's of eagerness for survival that day is stronger than the lion's oil to eat, the lion starve that day. But the, if the lion tests for blood that day is stronger than the will of the antelope to live, the antelope become breakfast that day. Whether you are an antelope running away from lions, whether we are a lion running after your goals, it's your will, your hunger, stronger than the obstacles that are going to be in front of you. It's your will, stronger than those who are trying to stop you. It's your competition, more willing than you are. These are questions that you have to ask yourself every morning you wake up before you wake up running. Am I going to become somebody's dinner tonight or breakfast to, uh, this morning? Oh, am I going to turn my goals into breakfast this morning? 
or I'm going to make sure that I overcome every obstacle that has been placed in my, uh, in my face today. This is the mindset. Now, let's talk about your why. I will share my own why. And you feel free to take notes. And I know people now have note parts in their cell phones, or electronic devices. You can start writing down your own why if you need to while I share my own story. When I was in the third grade, I attended a uh, parents, teachers, students meeting with my dad. My dad, uh, this is an old picture of me and my dad when I was in elementary school. He passed away in 2016. When we arrived at the school gate, my third grade teacher was at the gate welcoming the parents as, we walk, as they walk in. And she greet everyone by their last name. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Welcome, Mrs. Robert. Hey, Mr. Njai. How are you doing, Mr. Cisse? And when she got to my dad, she casually just said, hey, Kamara. I was in the third grade, but I knew something was not right about that attitude. On our way home, my dad held my hand when we were walking, and I yanked my hands from his hands. If you're African, you understand that disrespecting your parents like that? <laughs> he looked at me in our local language and said to me, what's wrong with you, boy? And that was the first time I ever talked back to my dad. Why did you let that woman disrespect you like that? She addressed everyone as Mr. or Miss or Mrs. And she casually just called you, come on, and you let her get away with you. That was the first time I saw mortality through my father's eyes. For the longest, I thought this man was unbreakable. I thought this man is greater than bad man and super bad combined. I thought he can take on anybody in this world. And I, I saw some tears in his eyes that day. And he looked at me and said to me, Son, if other children, parents are richer than your parents, more educated than your parents, and more respected in society than your parents, that's no fault of yours. But if their children grow up and become better than you, smarter than you, more educated than you, more successful than you, son, that is entirely your fault. I put you in school. I didn't get an opportunity to go to school. These other kids' parents went to school. They have nice, coveted government jobs. They put a shoe and ties to work every day. I don't have that opportunity. But I gave you the opportunity today so that tomorrow you can compete with your children. That boy, I have no idea what an engineer does. I have no idea what happened in the hospital, what a doctor does. I have no idea what is the job of a lawyer. I never met him at the time. But I know one thing for sure. I wanted to be called a Mr. One Day. And the only way I can achieve that is when I get, um, get some education. And now nothing was going to stop me from that point on. Whatever is necessary, I will go to school, and one day, my third grade teacher, everyone like her, would address me as Mr. Kamal. What is your why? What is your why? Why do you wake up every morning? If, if this room is locked and I ask you to run through this glass door, you may probably think twice about it. If this building is on fire, and you have your child with you, and you need to save that child. You will break any glass door to save that child. Your why changes your perspective. Your, child, your why changes everything about you. What's your why? Hustle like an immigrant starts with your why. As any immigrant in this world, anywhere you live there, why they are where they are. And I guarantee you, they will give a very inspiring story how they get to where they are. And I will tell you more stories about my wife. In 1990, I don't know if anyone can remember, uh, one of the biggest boxing events we came to know, Buster Douglas versus Mike Tyson. My man over there can remember that fight. Mike Tyson was like a killer beast in the ring. 37 and 0. He lost five, 93 seconds, second round. 
Dump somebody's out. No, Bob, first round, that in three seconds. Plus, the Gunners was 41 and 1 at the time. He had lost number 5. He was ranked number 7 in the war. Mike was number 1. Mike was prepared for the fight against Holyfield that was supposed to come up in a few months. So he was the big of small things to that, you know, relax his muscle a little bit, get into shape. And he pick up Buster Douglas. Buster was number 7, fighting the number 1 guy in the war. Two to three months before the fight. Buster lost his mind. How many of you prepared for big things and great things in your life and you get hit by a person? The child gets sick, lost his spouse, parents get sick with cancer. You're in the fight of your life and these obstacles get thrown in your face. Two weeks before the fight, the mother of his children had a kidney disease and was in the hospital. Three days before the fight, he cut the flu. Think about all the bad things that could possibly happen in your life. You lost your mom, the one of your children is in the hospital. Now you're sick, trying to get in shape to fight the number one most devastating fight that we have ever seen in the world. The fight was supposed to be in the US, but guess what? Because Mike knocked everybody out. So quickly and so easily, people thought it's a waste of time to pay to go and watch my fight. Why would you go to Vegas for a 93 second fight? So the Boxing Federation decided that it's time to ship this fight internationally. The Madrid and Tokyo, Japan, decided to put the fight and they had to fight in Tokyo alone. Second round in the fight, my kill with the right hook. If you know anything about Mike Tyson, don't ever let him get, catch you with the right hook. No one wakes up from Mike Tyson right hook. Buster went down. The commentator said it's over. People mad, getting up way to, going to leave. And the referee just went through the ball and count, whatever, man. We knew this was going to happen. Okay, all right, let's go. One, two, by the nine count. Austin Douglas was up. Ready to go. I look confused. <laughs> no one wakes up from this right here. How dare you to stand up to me? He went for a few more rounds up to the 10th round. Let me tell you something about life. Life is a bully. Because too many people don't stand up to life. When it knocks people out or knock people down, they normally stay down. What life can understand is people who keep getting back up. And when you keep getting back up, life says maybe it's not worth it. Why waste my time with you when you keep getting back up when I know he is not going to get up? Let me just go and knock him out. When you keep getting back up, life leaves you alone. Because people don't stand up to life. No one ever took Mike to the 10th round. That was the hardest fight he ever fought in his life. And in the 10th round, all of you, Boston Dog Mike Tyson out. First time in his career. And after the fight, two weeks later, they asked Buster, How did you do it? How did you wake up from a mic right hook, let alone go to the 10th round and knock the champion down? And he looked at the camera and said, and I'll paraphrase, 23 days ago before my mom died, she told the entire world that I would knock my face now. I would dare to make her alive. Mike was fighting for a belt, a title. Buster was fighting for a woman in the heavens, his mother. Buster's wife is a little bit more serious than Mike. Any other day, up till today, if you put Mike and Buster in the same ring again, Mike would be Buster. But that one day, his wife is a little bit more serious than Mike. What's your wife? Is your wife stronger than your competition? When you are running a business, 
Is your wife good enough to inspire your employees? Can your clients, your customers, get inspired by your product? When they see, they can literally feel the emotion behind it, the story behind it. Your wife makes all the difference. I just said, and by the way, I did mention something. I'm an engineer by profession. I work for Union Pacific as a network engineer. I do professional training for corporations and organizations and professional speaking as a hobby. And a lot of times I deal with non-profit organizations like crazy mornings, writing a pain. A lot of times you have to pay your own way if you're motivated about it. Travel across the world, travel across the country to meet people and talk about some of the stories. To help somebody overcome. To help somebody become, achieve their goals and dreams. And sometimes I ask myself, is it worth it? Am I touching anyone? Am I changing anything? On my seventh, the day the Lakers were playing and LeBron James was supposed to break Michael Jordan all that squad record. I was watching the game with a colleague. At night, I received a Facebook message from a young lady. She lives in Europe. I didn't know her at the time. I didn't even know she was following me on social media. She sent me a message, she said to me, I need to talk to someone. And for whatever reason, I decided to respond. Besides, so sometimes get a lot of messages and some messages get lost. And I responded that night and I asked her, are you okay? She said, no, I just tried to take my own life. The police rescued me and I'm afraid if they leave, I will do it again. I got up from the living room and went to the bedroom and started talking to her on the phone and I called her. Basically on Facebook. We had a long conversation that lasted for about three hours. She gave me a whole run that I'm not going to share. But she was six months pregnant at the time in a abusive relationship. She felt like she had reached right bottom. No one would believe her story. She already had one failed marriage. She didn't want to have another failed marriage again. We looked at as a failure. She was going to end it. She tried one, she failed, she was determined to do it again. July 1st, four days before my birthday, she sent me a picture of her baby boy. Long story says she's fine. But that evening confirmed to me that maybe what I'm doing is wrong. Maybe the such stories I'm sharing on social media, maybe the speaking engagement that I'm doing. It's actually reaching somebody somewhere, even if they are telling me today. That is my why. That's why I love doing these things. That's why I love being settings like here today. That's why I appreciate organizations like the Creative Community Work that you guys have been thinking very much. Because you never know how you may touch people and how you may change people's lives by the little things that you are doing, even if they don't tell you today. Never met her. Don't know her. Would have never known her. You see, I've never reached out to me that way. But by God's grace, I was able to walk with her that night. And she was able to take a leap of faith with me and believe in the things that I was trying to explain to her, to push her through that process. And today she's fine with her being born. What's your why? What's your why? Think about it. Now, once you have a why, a strong why. What's your goal? What you trying to achieve? What's your purpose? And let me tell you something right there. Having a goal is the most selfish thing you can ever do for yourself. Yeah, you have that right. Having a goal that you're trying to achieve is the most selfish thing you can ever do in this world. Your goal determines what type of food you eat. Your goal determines when you go to bed. Your goal determines when you wake up. Your goal is determine the kind of people you hang out with, the kind of friends that you have. Your goal is determine your kind of life you're going to lead. If you want to lose 10 pounds, you can't eat pizza every day. Your goal is going to dictate that. If you want to become a basketball player, you're going to spend most of your time watching basketball games and shooting jump shots. If you want to be a football player, you got to spend most of your childhood watching football and playing football. 
When you want to become a manager to a job, chances are you're going to have to stay late and come early more than the usual. If you want to get your master's degree or MBA, you cannot go on gas night out every weekend. You're going to have to miss some of them. If you want to become a, have a promotion at your job, chances are you're going to have to take on more projects, do more stuff, develop yourself, go back to school, and do things that your friends may not want to like you to do. When I first moved, uh, moved here, working for Union Pacific, I, used, I was younger. I used to hang out every day, I don't drink. So all my friends have to drive. They love hanging out with me. They know they are safe, <laughs> right? And they don't have to spend their money on me and buying drinks. So all my friends love me. They compete who's gonna hang out with me during the weekend. Until I decided I want to do more in my life. I want to start a non-profit organization. I want to manage the organization. I want to do stuff around the world. And I stopped hanging out with people. It's like, who you change, bro? Man, I remember when you used to be more fun, bro. We don't see you no more, man. What's happening? They no longer appreciate the person I was becoming. I had to lose a lot of friends. At least who I told their friends. Your goals will determine that for you. You want to go back to school and get a degree? Yeah, some of your boyfriends and girlfriends and colleagues and people you hang out with will be mad at you. Because they don't see you as much anymore. You don't do the things that you used to do for them anymore. They love you for the things you do for them, not what you're doing for yourself. That's why it's important to have a goal, because if you don't have a clear goal, all the people will make use, build their own goals and their own dreams and experience or whatever it is. They will use your life as a stepping stone to achieve their own accomplishments. And let me tell you another example that happened recently. A friend in the UK was supposed to go to Dusseldorf in Germany. For whatever reason, the flight ended up in Scotland. People wonder how can you leave a whole country to a complete wrong country? Not the wrong airport in the state, not probably delayed for a couple of hours or 30 minutes. You went to a complete different country. How can a flight leave the US and fly all the way to China? When you don't have any clear road map that you can see or use, the difference is direction. Whatever direction you feed a flight, that's the direction that the flight is going to go towards. And if you don't have a goal, you normally don't usually have a direction for your life. The way a flight can get up from the UK and instead of going to just sell dog in Germany, it ended up in Scotland. It's because somebody fell in the wrong direction. Some of us, we work for companies. Or some of us are managers or leaders who are running our own companies. What information are you feeding your employees? Do they understand the clear cut direction to what are the goals and objectives of the company? Sometimes you assume the people do, you will surprise how they don't. Yes, yeah, people work for a company for 20 years and they can't tell you what is the mission statement of the company is. They work in a department for years and they can tell you what are the values of that particular department. Directions. When you don't have clear goals, you don't have directions in your life. You need clear goals that can provide directions for your people working for you. You need a direction in your own life to know where you are going. Every day you wake up from your work, from your house and you go to your work because you have a clear direction. You know where you are going. If I put you in St. Louis and you've never been to St. Louis and I ask you to find a gas station, you lost. You couldn't take me to any gas station because you lack what? Direction. Goals provide direction in your life. Discipline, I call it a middle child. It's usually, it's very important, but it's usually forgotten and neglected. They can, middle children can cause the most havoc in the world and no one will not notice. Because they are so being used that nobody pays attention to them. But they are very, very, very significant. 
Discipline is a self-assigned principle that's supposed to yield high, high results. Are you disciplined enough to see true hardship? Are you disciplined enough that when you set a goal, that you're going to make sure it seem true? How many of us sometimes put dishes in the dishwasher and say that I'm going to wash them tonight? Or today when I get off work at some point? You let me tonight and you're about to go to bed. This is not done. What do you say? Oh, I'll just do it tomorrow. <laughs> you promise your children we're going to do this this weekend. They get like all excited. You made a promise. You take your words for it. Saturday comes. You know what? Do it again next weekend. What is the responsibility? What is the consequence for your responsibilities when you fail yourself? When you say you're going to do something, I'm going to wash my dishes before I go to bed tonight. It's 11.59 and you better not go to bed. What is the consequence for you not doing that thing that you promised that you're going to do? I'll give you an example. Not long ago, I have a cat shape. The internet went down. It went down for about six hours. And I called him. Told me that the service would be back up by this time. Okay, fine. Service came back up as they promised. I wasn't satisfied. I paid for a monthly subscription. Meaning you promised that you're going to be up. And service should be reliable throughout the whole month. Not that we're going to have a six hours hour in between the month. I complained to customer service. I need something. You have to compensate me for all the promise you failed. Okay. They gave me some credit back. It wasn't money by 99 cents or money. <laughs> that was the best 99 cents I ever had in my pocket. I felt like I fought for it. I earned it. This is my money. It's my 99 cents. <laughs> Where do you sustain yourself for 99 cents? Where's the first one? This is why there's a difference between highly successful people and less successful people in this world. This is what I call the third principle of hustle academy. Holding yourself accountable for the things that you promise that you're going to do. And when you fail yourself, what the consequence is. I promise myself that every day I'm going to run three miles, 5K, before I eat dinner. If I don't do this every day, I'm not going to eat dinner that night. And I love eating. So my test to myself is, if I fail to run today, my body is simple, right? But it's a principle. It's a self-assigned principle that's supposed to yield something for me. If I fail myself and I fail the promise, what is the consequence of failing the promise? Most of us don't have any consequences for our actions. We promise to do things. We promise people that we're going to do stuff for them. We say things, and we don't follow through. Zero for through. And when we don't do it, we just don't do it. Discipline. Are you disciplined enough to hold yourself accountable for the things that you promise yourself? I'll give you a quick example. In 2011, Kobe Bryant, I use a lot of sport analysis, was playing against the Miami Heat. This went to LeBron James to Miami Heat took his time to South Beach, and it was the big three, a lot of superstars, everybody in the NBA hit him. So in the fourth quarter, Kobe Bryant missed three consecutive shots, and they ended up losing the game by six points. So if he had made those three shots, at least either they win or they tie, depending on whether it's a two-point or a three-point. And after the game, this was in South Beach. Basketball players love the park. This is not playoffs. Middle of the season, no one really cares except that you play LeBron. And while all the other guys took their shower, ready to hit the streets, to go party, out front, they were in the bus waiting for Kobe Bryant to come out. He went into the locker room, changed, and went back to the gym. So he jumps out. From the same position that he missed those shots, the entire team were in the bus waiting on this one guy to come out. And he was shooting jump shots. And the reporter called him with an accent. You already won five championships, man. Five! That's more than 5% of the NBA will ever achieve. 
You are the greatest player in the world today. The most paid, highest paid player in the world. And you back in the gym after missing a shot? And his response was, what are the chances that I'll be back in the same position again, playing the Miami years, and have opportunity to make the same shot again? He missed the shot. And he knew it turns out he may be in the same position again. And he want to make sure when he is there, he do not feel like he did before. How many of us apply for a job? We don't get it, but we just brush it up and walk away. Chances are you're going to want to have another job. Chances are you're going to want to have that promotion. And you just got no, and you never try to even find out why you got to know. You failed at something. You failed at your business that you're trying to start. It didn't work. You just brush your shoulders and keep it moving. You try to achieve your goals and you fail, so what? Did you ever go back and practice? Maybe you need to go back to school and get that degree. Maybe you need to spend more time at work and learn work on skills that you don't have. Maybe you are a Java program and you need to learn how to do C++. Maybe you are a business analyst you need to learn how to use SAP. Maybe it's just one thing that is stopping you from getting the job. But if you never go back and practice that last shot that you missed, when you put, when you are put back in the same game, same position, same time, you're gonna miss it again because you lack the discipline to hold yourself accountable or responsible when you fail. Perseverance. Ask any immigrant in this world; they will tell you a million times they failed in life and they have to overcome. Matter of fact, ask them how they, they get to America. That alone is enough for severity. See, how, it don't matter how smart you are. It don't matter how good looking you are. You will fail. People will look at you and they will not like you for no reason. Yes, you smile too much. I can't stand her. She comes to work every morning smiling. Oh! <laughs> yes, somebody's going to dislike that for no reason. People are not going to like you for no reason. You're going to come across, you're going to apply for a position. You're going to have everything that you need to have. You'll go and scratch in your head. Why? I got everything. They said no. See, I would like to share a few stories with you guys. In Africa, the lion is the king of the jungle. But like we all agreed earlier on, the lion is like a bastard. So meaning when the lion and the cheetah sports a prey at the same time and they say go, the cheetah will get to the lion, uh, will get to the prey before the lion. This was the story to Mr. Lion. The lion cannot stand this. Nah, I'm the king. I can't stop in my own house. This is not tough. Chita said to the lion, see, I understand that. I know that you're the king. All here the king. I'm the fastest. I eat before you eat. The lion said, okay, I see you. Oh, I think you're smart. You think you got a degree, right? Okay. You think you were what? You about to get a promotion? That's what you think? Okay, cool. Are oh, you trying to start your own business? Okay, fine. Let's, let's see about that. I'm the king, though. This is my job. Not only am Am I the king? I'm going to let you outrun me. Go kill the prey. I'm going to come behind you. Kill you, eat you, and eat your prey. Now I have two things. <laughs> she just said, yeah, I'm in trouble here. Something not right. I can't move with this guy. Too strong, too smart. The lion was about to walk away. I told you. She was like, excuse me, sir, one more thing. Not only am I the fastest, but you forget that I can also climb. I have the agility to climb the tallest tree in the jungle. Once I outrun you and kill my prey, I will carry my prey with me to the tallest, jump, uh, tallest tree. I was like, oh, devastating. You're right, you got a point. You got one of me. The I went home that day, the whole evening, just mad. And devastated, depressed. And Mrs. Lion asked Mr. Lion, sweetheart, darling, what's bothering you? 
share with me who you love to share. They love to communicate. Let's communicate. Let's talk. No, I don't want to talk about it. Honey, let's talk. Let's communicate. It's good for a relationship. All right, all right. So Mr. Cheater proved that he can outrun me. We already know this. We all know this. But he can also outclimb me. Meaning if you get away, he can climb the tallest tree and I will never get to him. Huh? What can I do? How can I rule in my own kingdom when I cannot eat fox? And Mrs. Lyon said, Ah, oh, darling, you're looking at this whole thing wrong. You waited too long. You waited until the lion and the children grows. Kill them while they are young. Women. If any man thinks that you can outsmart women, God help you. <laughs> the greatest boardrooms in this world, the most successful businesses today, they are all proven there. They are better when there are more women in their boardrooms. Women just think methodically. They level of processing is different. The lion went around the jungle looking for cheetah cars. Savage stuff. Chopping their heads, snapping them, stomping on them, <laughs> killing them. And some of you here may be cheaters or cheater cubs in a jungle full of lions. The lions could be your spouse. Why you want to go back to school? We don't have time for this. We have kids, we have bills to pay. I can't do this. Why are you going to go back to school? They are afraid of your success. They are afraid of you outrunning them, outclimbing them. Your spouse, unfortunately, can be lying in your life. Your family members. No one in the family ever had a master's degree. No one in the family ever had their own business. No one in the family ever, ever, ever did blah, 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 blah. What makes you think that you are the one who's going to do it? Your family members can sometimes be your life. Oh, I love this one. Your friends. You're trying to move to California. Why? You are a Nebraska girl. You are a country boy. Where are you trying to leave? You're not going to survive in Cali. They don't hate you. They love you for themselves. They want you here. Your best friend can be the lion in your life. My message is, you got to persevere. You got to persevere through things sometimes that you can anticipate and you're going to persevere through. I'll give you an example of how you can fail and still persevere. How many of you ever had a Jack Ma? Jack Ma, Chinese tycoon billionaire. He's one of the richest Chinese in the world. When Jack, Jack failed middle school, when you talk about academics, he, he sucks. He failed middle school. He barely went to high school. And guess what he went to do? This dude wanted to get into Harvard. You better get to middle school if you want to get into Harvard. He applied 10 times. They rejected him 10 times. He's not even like, no, they don't even no, immediately. He's not like, you know, wait the leaves or you got to wait for months to find out. No, he's like, two weeks applied back in two weeks. No, we don't want you for the 10th time. He turned to become a police officer in China. Rejected. Nope, we don't need your salaries. He applied to work for KFC. KFC first came to China. 24 people applied to be frying chicken for KFC. No disrespect to KFC. KFC. 24 people applied. They hired 23. 23. This dude is a 24 candidate. He did not get hired. Today, he's one of the richest men in the world. 
when he started his own business called Alibaba. Some of you, you failed at the wrong things. Oh yeah, you can actually fail at something that you don't get inspired about. Something you don't want at all. You can get fired from a job that you don't even want to work at to begin with. But you don't have the courage to step out and do something that you love. You are not failing at your goals. Anytime you fail, next time you try, you don't start from zero. You start from experience. And I would rather start from experience any day than to start from zero. You gotta persevere through hardship because they're gonna come through your life. Where there's a divorce, where there's sickness, where there's lose a job, where there's financial issues, whatever it is, hardship are gonna hit you. Those lions in this life are gonna come at you one way or the other. You have to persevere through those hardships. And the last one, risk. I call it blackjack. You gotta be willing to write the blackjack for yourself. You gotta be willing at any given time to sacrifice who you are today for what you could become. See, my mentality and the mentality of many immigrants is simple and simple as this. I don't know you. I know me. And I have more faith in me than you. I would take a risk on me any day that any corporation, any institution, any individual in this world. You can put me in a basketball game today, in a football game with Tom Brady, and I would still think that I can beat that man. I don't know him. I see the brain. I don't know him, but I know me. I know how much heart I got. I, I can't get into his heart. I don't know what he got. You got to will it at any given time to sacrifice who you are for what you could become. When I, preached, when I completed my undergrad, I was working as an assistant manager. Now mind you, you're talking about a young man from West Africa who used to go to school there for some times. Found a job that he took was the American dream, working as an assistant manager in a gas station. I get to both of the people around. When the manager is not home, he's not in the office, I get to see the boss's chair swing around. <laughs> I get to tell other people what they need to do. Hey, Sam, can you please make some coffee for the customers? Thank you for making coffee, Sam. Hey, Brittany, thank you. Great job for making that coffee. I thought I made it. And then I got accepted into graduate school with that scholarship. And I had to give up my $14 an hour job in Mississippi. That was a lot of money for me as a college student. Coming from my country, that's a devastated by poverty. And I have to make a choice. Am I willing to sacrifice, say, cool, the assistant manager, for a vision to become, say, cool, engineer? I packed my bags, moved out of my two bedroom apartment at the time, and went to graduate school sleeping in my car and taking showers in friends' apartments because that's what I was willing to do. I knew Sekou, the assistant manager, was okay, but imagine what Sekou the engineer could be. Sometimes you gotta have the who are moment to sit down and see your own life, your future, for what it could become. Know what you are today, or what you could possibly become. And what sacrifice do you need to make today to become that thing or that person that you know if you take a reach on yourself that you could become. Risk. Have a will at any point when the time is right to sacrifice who you are for what you could become. When I was, I, I published two books then. When I wrote my first book, I was kind of shuffling around to get people to go public some companies to pick it up. I call it testimony of an African immigrant. Talked about my experience, the dream of coming to America, my life in America, my experiences, the struggles that I've been through, my experience in corporate America, all of it. 
I saw that about I got a bunch of notes. One company finally called me. And they said, well, you are on one other, no one, nobody knows you. We are a big company. We can spend money and publish your work. But if we do, we have to own the copyrights to your book. You no longer own your book. When we sell it, you probably get 30 or 20% from the royalties from the book. But mind you, we are taking the risk on you. No one knows you. This book may never sell. So to reward our risk, these are the conditions. You're going to have to lose. I could care as a lot of money. If they have offered me that they're going to at least give me the right to my copyright, I probably would accept it if they'd say to me, you're going to get 1% of the royalties because I'm careless. I was more focused on the impact that the movie had. And a friend of mine asked me, have you ever looked into self publishing? Self publish? Is that even a thing? He's like, yeah, you can publish your own book, own the rights, and sell it, and all that stuff. Long story short, I decided to. Work harder, took my end of year bonus from the UP, invest in the book, self published the book, signed a distribution deal with Amazon, where I own my copy, the rights to my uh, manuscript, and Amazon only distributed it for me. A few months later, the same company called me. And I went, Mr. Camaro, we saw that your book is doing very well. We have sold the graph, we sell books in five different continents at, the time, at this time. A lot of copies been sold, you do a speaking engagement. We would like to offer you a better deal. Are you willing to negotiate? Never say no to negotiations. I don't care what it is. Always sit down, always be open to conversations. And I'll listen to them. Oh, we can give you speaking engagement, but I'm doing it on my own. Um, we can create a website for you and make it for you. I got to create my own website. Uh, you're going to get more sales, like you said, on five different continents. What else can we offer you? He said, let me call you back. They never called again. Because everything that they can do for me, when I took the risk and tried to do it myself, I was able to accomplish that. And sometimes this is what you do. This is where you're going to find yourself in this world. You're going to have to do things that other people don't believe in. And once you take that risk, then you turn them into believers. And then they will be willing to come and offer you stuff that you don't even ask for. At that point, you cannot negotiate when you have nothing to offer. But when you have everything to offer, you pretty much negotiate your destiny. When I was ready to publish my second book, they reached out again. Are you ready to negotiate? What else can you give me that you haven't offered already? You know I can already do all this stuff on my own. They couldn't give me anything more. Because I was willing to take the risk. The five steps to also like an enemy. What's your why? No matter how great you are, you're going to find obstacles in this life that's going to knock you down. Unless you have a strong right to get back up, you may not get up. What's your goal? Without clear good goal, you like directions. And without directions, you will never make it to a destination. Are you disciplined enough to hold yourself accountable when you promise that you're going to do something and you fail to do it? Hardship is going to hit you. People are going to doubt you. People are going to question you. Some people are even going to intentionally try to stop you. Are you prepared to persevere through those difficulties? And if need be, are you willing to risk it and do it all over again because you believe in yourself? Thank you very much.